Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface, hot off returning home from the cinema, having seen Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix, directed by Todd Phillips. And before I go into this non-spoiler review, uh, if you do want a spoiler discussion, uh, then upvote the video, put in the comment section, and if I see enough interest there, I will create one for you, and I'll release that later this evening for your viewing pleasure. But this will be non-spoiler. Uh, I just want to say a couple of things surrounding the media and the media's... Uh, negative press surrounding this film and this is both um, online media and television media having seen joker now having seen it in all of its context in all of its glory i can say without any shadow of a doubt that the media should be absolutely disgusted with themselves they should be ashamed because in some quarters they were almost trying to goad something to happen at a cinema uh, surrounding this release event and there is nothing in joker whatsoever that you haven't seen or see every single solitary day of your life on tv and film nothing so this whole furore this whole negativity surrounding it this whole narrative that they want to create these people are ridiculous insane and ridiculous maybe that's what you need around a joker movie i don't know but they are buffoons it's the only way that i can describe them so with those people firmly dismissed let's get on with the non-spoiler review well joker lasts approximately two hours and i have to say those two hours went past like that in a blink of an eye, I was so engrossed by what was going on on the screen. I was so engrossed by the characters, the acting, the locations, everything, that this was an event that went past really quickly. So I can almost guarantee me going back and watching this film again just to try and absorb more. Because Joker is a fantastic movie. We'll just get that straight out of the way off the bat. So, first of all, let's go into Todd Phillips's direction. The cinematography of the film is beautiful. I mean, what you see on the screen isn't. Gotham is a dirty place set in this non-universe. Uh, this doesn't link to any known universe of film that we know, thank goodness. Uh, but it is dirty, it's dank, it's disgraceful. But the cinematography, the shots, the lighting, the colours are just beautiful. And I have to also give particular props to the score. There is a score which just drives through this film from start to finish. And it changes as we get into the descent. Or is it liberation? of Arthur Fleck, who is played by Joaquin Phoenix. Now, my friend who I went with said to me that uh, he thinks the score is a very, very slowed down version of Send in the Clowns, which was quite interesting. I don't know if that's true, but it was haunting. It was always there, and it changed pitch depending on how Arthur was declining or liberating whichever one you want to pick when it comes to that and it was just divine the characters i gotta be honest this is pretty much the whacking phoenix show i'm not sure if he's not in every single scene i can't recall a scene without him uh, but there might have been the odd one here or there but his presence his time uh, on screen is vast and not only that um, we see this pathetic character at the start of the film and then obviously what happens at the end of the film and this transformation this journey that the character goes through is not in any way shape or form contrived it's very naturally done. And the range which Joaquin Phoenix has to go through to portray this is un 
unbelievable. We talk about Oscar nods. There's been all this Oscar discussion surrounding his portrayal. If Joaquin doesn't at least get a nomination, I will be amazed. Because this is some of the best acting I've ever seen. It's absolutely phenomenal. And even though this is pretty much the Joaquin Phoenix show, there are some supporting members of cast, which isn't vast. We have Arthur's mother. We have Arthur's love interest, played by Zazie Beetz. We have Robert De Niro playing uh, Murray Franklin, who's the talk show host, which is very prominent in the movie as well. And all of the supporting cast are excellent in their own right. But there's lots and lots of small little roles by people which you haven't necessarily seen on television before. Now, does this follow any comic storyline that we've seen in publication no this is its own original spin there are certainly nods uh to graphic works like a killing joke which ironically is a very revered uh piece of literature never mind a comic a piece of literature there's certain uh nods here or there but this story which todd phillips has created as well is very very intriguing indeed however it is a slow paced film this isn't a film where things are happening all the time and things are getting out of control no this is a very controlled film about somebody's fall or somebody's liberation we are seeing a very specific turn of events happening before we get to the crescendo at the end so if you're not into more character driven slow paced movies you might get a little bored at times you might want things to escalate a bit quicker uh, in your eyes but if this is something that you're interested in you're gonna be in for an absolute treat thomas wayne brett cullen also uh, provides a very interesting spin on Thomas Wayne and the very specific verbiage that they use. These aren't just written lines of, of, of nonsense. They're very specifically written verbiage, which lead to a lot of the events uh, which happen in the movie. You'll see a lot of people with clown faces on. And this uh, follows Thomas Wayne, uh, obviously billionaire, uh, prominent person within Gotham City. And his little storyline in itself uh, proves to be of great interest to Arthur. Uh, as the story proceeds and reaches its crescendo, it's done very, when I, when I say tastefully, there's nothing which seems to be uh, in any way, shape or form gratuitous. It's not as if the film is setting you up for a punchline. This film has a very logical progression to where it gets to it never in any way shape or form tries to cheat uh, the audience uh, you feel as if you get payoff based off what you have seen from the character and my god this is just a, a cinema event which has to be believed i want to go back and see it with a uh, busy cinema i because I went at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Friday. People are at work. People, are, Kids are at school. This isn't a holiday. Uh, so I got to see it in, in relative um, quietness. Uh, I want to go back when the cinema's packed. When the cinema's busy. I want to hear uh, people's reactions to certain events which happen in the film. And be part of that process. But I definitely want to go back for a second viewing. Uh, this film is just spectacular absolutely spectacular so if we're gonna grade joker i will give it eight and a half nine out of ten it's not the 10 out of 10 stunning masterpiece uh it's an excellent excellent film that will provide plenty for people that are not aware of the joker or the origin or made up origins of him uh and it will also uh, please comic goers with plenty of little easter eggs here or there in the film, 
plenty of little lines taken here or there as well uh, from various uh, forms of uh, Batman lore, which will keep them interested too. Go see it. I've waffled on enough. Go see this film. It's fan fantastic uh so there we go non-spoiler review again if you want uh, a spoiler discussion thumb up the video leave a comment let me know if there's enough interest i will do one for you and release it toot sweet uh so i hope you enjoyed the vid if you did do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel follow me on social media and twitch to live for live streaming links are in the description box down below it's not as if i do this outro every single video is it and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.